Hello everybody, welcome to this interview. Today we have the pleasure to receive Mr. Roy Bonnell. Mr. Bonnell, thank you for coming by. Thanks for having me again. Excellent. Um, so let's talk with your agreement that you signed with PPG. Um, how many tons would you deliver to them? Well, uh, PPG considers the purchase of raw material both in terms of uh, pricing and quantity to be uh, strategic information. But I can tell you that the, uh, the number of tons for us is a significant number of tons. And uh, PPG is the uh, largest uh, uh, paint company in the world and likely one of, if not the largest purchaser of uh, titanium dioxide in the world. We believe it's probably a significant number of tons uh, for them to purchase from any one company as well. Okay. Um, now they, that they, purchase the, some of, they want to purchase some of your supply, um, have they been involved right now in the, techno in the their technology? Because I know your technology is uh, it's patented and it's uh, innovative technology. Mm. Are they getting involved now more and more? Because well, they have a bigger stake now. The fact that you have to be, you're becoming one of their suppliers. That's right. And um, what we announced on June 27, which was consistent with what we announced mm -hmm. the previous year on April 3rd, was that we are continuing to work with a PPG and we'll be using a PPG. Uh, uh, technology for coating our TiO2 okay. with the focus of making TiO2 for usage in architectural paint, okay. which is the largest of the paint markets and thus the largest uh, market for titanium dioxide as well. So mm -hmm. it's really uh, the PPG coating technology which will be applied to the RGX TiO2 okay. that we will be selling into the architectural paint market. Okay. Talking of your technology, because uh, I saw the progress of your technology for the last two interviews that you came. Uh, I mean, from 0.3 gram, I think, um, and you produce, you increase it by 300 percent. Uh, now you you have bigger plans. You want to build a, a fact a plant. Um, are you not scared, or are there not some challenges uh, the f with applying this technology at an industrial scale right now? It's well, totally a different game, no? Uh, yeah, I think there will always be challenges, mm -hmm. and I don't want to minimize those. One of the things that we're doing in order to uh, mitigate the risk is we're uh, constructing our R&D center uh, at the site of what we've also announced will be the, the, the site of our first uh, industrial size plant in mm -hmm. Valley Field, Quebec. And um, in so doing, we'll probably scale it up uh, one more time. But uh, at the same time, it's going to become an important uh, training tool for everybody who will be working on the industrial size plant. Mm -hmm. And we believe we'll be mitigating uh, risk in terms of making sure that the industrial plant is built with the fewest uh, hiccups possible. Excellent. Uh, something caught my attention in your answer here, because um, I remember when you used to make the, the, the test, you used to have some metallurgists in Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, so are they coming to Valleyfield to actually do the test, or how you guys are planning to actually um, make sure that the R&D continues? Well, I think it's part of the evolution of any company, okay. whereby we bring the, uh, the, the research and development to whatever extent possible uh, in-house. Okay. As I said, it becomes important, not just in R&D, but also in terms of, of training. Yeah. So uh, the metallurgists in Ontario uh, were important in terms of developing the CTL technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step for RJX in terms of evolving as a company is to train people internally and to build an R&D team internally to once again mitigate uh, to whatever extent possible the risks in terms of scaling up to the industrial size. Okay. Um, technology set up, you have the, the team that is ready, you're planning to actually put the R&D in-house. Now, about the plant, do you have all the necessary permits and how long will you expect, you estimate it will take to actually come with full permitting and be able to pose, pose the first mortar? Well, one of the nice things about the site that we've chosen in Valley Field is that it's a brownfield site that was previously, uh, pre it was, it w it's, it's an existing building okay. that was previously used for uh, chemical purposes. So uh, also for those of, of us who know Valley Field a little bit, it's really a chemically focused community. Okay. You've got C Zinc out there, you've got other uh, chemically focused companies. Okay. Okay. So there's a, there's a level of comfort with uh, chemical uh, industries and mm -hmm. the usage of uh, acid for industrial purposes. Okay. But also because this is a brownfield site, it allows us to do what we believe uh, to be, in comparison to other projects, minimal permitting, mm -hmm. uh, while at in tandem to actually moving ahead with uh, the construction of our industrial size pl okay. uh, plant. 
but you cannot give us so far uh, a deadline or a date that we could expect that RGX will finally announce that they're getting all their permits and they're going to start. I, you know, the process has started. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, um, so as you know as well, we're, we're in the process of doing our, uh, our feasibility study. How's it going, by the way, this? Uh, it's, it's going, I think, well. Uh, like every feasibility study, it's had a few uh, challenges. And okay. But that's one of the purposes of a feasibility to, uh, to identify those challenges and, and resolve them, which our engineering team has done, I think, relatively well. They've reported to us at the end of June that they're 85% complete. Um, what's important about that as well from a permitting perspective is before you can get full permitting, um, the, uh, in the government and the people who are concerned with environmental permitting want to understand fully what you're doing. That yeah. we can provide them with uh, through the feasibility study. Uh, so we've started the process, and uh, once we've been able to, to show them what the, uh, the final plans are and what the final process is, then the uh, environmental uh, permitting, we think, uh, is, uh, is, is, is really m not, n not uh, something that we see as a, as a major bump in the road. Where we, we, we can do it in tandem. As I, I said before, it's, it's a chemically uh, focused community chemically focused property um, we're not uh, we're not concerned that that's going to be a delay in what we're doing okay have you also also um, started to actually um, not say lobby but like talk to a couple of people in the government to actually get some backup or to help you guys uh, be mm. accepted in this community well we've had very strong support from okay. the community we've met with uh, the mayor in Valley field we've met with the uh, the uh, economic development uh, uh, department there. Uh, when we announced Valley Field, uh, the city was kind enough and the mayor was kind enough to put, put a quote into our news release demonstrating his support okay. and the community's support for what we were doing. Uh, we also announced a couple of weeks ago uh, that we'll be working with Investissement Quebec okay. and uh, part of that was the actual Minister of Natural Resources put a quote as well in, in terms of the importance of our project for a region like Valley Field. Okay. So we feel that we are uh, making the right steps forward in order to uh, to win and and continue with the government support which we've been uh, so lucky to have. Excellent. Um, in the last interview you said that um, before you started the feasibility study you wanted to bring uh, the project into a certain level uh, before hiring uh, Jenny Vore because you wanted to minimize your cost, mitigate that's the right. risk, that's part of that's your, right. that's your strategy. Now how much money do you guys have in your coffers and how do you tend what do you, what is going to be your burn rate for the next six months and do you intend to go to the capital markets and the nearest future to actually uh, make the process go a little bit faster? Well, we announced two weeks ago that we we're affecting a ten million dollar uh, private placement okay. with uh, Investissement Quebec okay. and uh, with a U.S. fund mm. and uh, that I think is uh, demonstrative of not only the significant uh, support that we have from uh, IQ, from Investissement Quebec, but also uh, in the marketplace. Uh, the next step will be, once the feasibility study is completed, to go out and raise the project financing uh, required to build a plant, which will be a, a significant uh, step forward as well in terms of uh, moving the plant towards uh, production. Okay, so um, there's one question here, Mr. Bonnell, from our, our viewers. He's asking, uh, Dupont told this morning that they want to sell uh, their pin pigment division. Um, how do you think this can impact you? Because uh, you guys are in a titanium business, you're selling mm -hmm. the PPG. Uh, do you think that the fact that Dupont says that, that is going to have a, an overall a effect on your relationship with PPG? I don't think it will have any effect on no. our relationship with uh, PPG. Uh, it's a very dynamic industry. Okay. Uh, there is uh, talk all the time. Uh, this is not the first time that DuPont, uh, the DuPont president made that statement. I think she made the same statement at the last uh, quarter's uh, okay. discussion of earnings as well. Uh, Huntsman, uh, other companies have all talked about different ways of reconstructing an industry that, uh, that is, uh, it, it's, it's in a very dynamic uh, mode right now. Okay. Now let's talk of logistics, because you have a pr your project, your main project is at Lac Brulé. Uh, in terms of the logistics to transport the raw material from Lac Brulé to Salaberry Valley Field, um, are there some roads that are already already ready, or are you guys intend to just be a, a a plant that just takes raw material from all over the world and process it and brings makes it to be a t titanium and sell it to PPG? What's the plan there? Well, we can do both. 
And okay. the, the nice thing about the Valley Field site is the flexibility that it provides us in terms of logistics. We're right next to a, a port, one of the most important ports in Quebec. Okay. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the 30, the new auto route, uh, runs right through uh, Valley Field. Uh, uh, Valley Field is the only uh, port in Canada that also has a CSX hub with direct rail links to, to the U.S., mm -hmm. as well as a CN hub. And, of course, it's right on the seaway as well with uh, links uh, through the Great Lakes to other important cities throughout Canada and the United States. Okay. So, um, but with uh, PPG now that you guys have, have, have a supplier, um, have there been like more, uh, in terms of the relationship, because I remember you wanted to actually have um, a bigger relationship, something more broader in the relationship. Like so far, how do you uh, see the relationship going? Like uh, are you satisfied with, uh, with the process of the relationship and how it is evolving? I think we're very satisfied and I think it's a tremendous vote of confidence for a company like Argex to be working with PPG. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're making the claims that we're making about what we think we can do and at what price we think we can do it, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people who, who say, well, prove it. Yeah. And the ability to work with somebody with the, uh, the credibility, uh, like PPG, uh, is very important for both the financial markets and for the industry markets to see uh, what we're doing is not just um, uh, fanciful claims, mm -hmm. but actual uh, progress in terms of our, uh, of our process. So in terms of your process, have you hired like new people in your team to be able to actually um, make sure that this process um, is able to scale up and industrial scale pretty well by minimi mitigating the risk? We have hired a, a, a quite a few people on the operations side. We're okay. going to continue over the next year uh, okay. in terms of uh, human resources to be focused in terms of bringing operational people in who can help us not only in terms of uh, the relocation of the R&D center, but moving towards uh, industrial production. So your burn rate is going to increase with this addition of additional pe human resources people in your team, right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as we move closer to production, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we wouldn't do that unless we felt that uh, we, were, uh, we were comfortable with the level of risk that represents. Okay. And that's why it was important, for example, that we go out and we seek the support of uh, IQ and yeah. other important uh, investors okay. to make sure that we were able to do that. Okay. How much money do you have in your coffers right now, cash? Uh, I, I believe that... Uh, uh, we're probably below $5 million okay. at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we have had uh, quite a few uh, warrants exercised mm -hmm. uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks, so I'm, I'm not completely sure of the okay. correct amount. Okay. But obviously with the, the $10 million uh, financing that's been an announced, uh, that puts us in a very comfortable position as we move forward. Excellent. Uh, right now, if you take a look, technically speaking, at your, at your stock, you see that the, the entry point was going to be at a 118. On Argex, it's clearly going to be a nice entry point. But uh, tell us, because with all this uh, credibility that you guys are getting, signing some deals with PPG, uh, uh, big names, uh, moving forward with the plant, you know, there's some companies who have not been able to manage that uh, challenge um, so effectively. Mm. Um, do you intend to guys move to the TSX stock exchange eventually to actually add more credibility, more swag, I should say, to your? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, I think a lot of companies, if not all the companies on, on the venture, would uh, one day like to have that swag, <laughs> uh, including ourselves. And uh, obviously, that's uh, that's something that we, we, we see in our plans, and mm -hmm. hopefully, it'll be uh, sooner rather than later. Excellent. So, what are the deadlines that we could expect from RJX? What should an investor who's looking at your company, who's followed your company, what should they look for in the end of the day, at the end of the year, and in the beginning of 2014? Well, I think the most uh, important inflection point mm -hmm. in terms of uh, progress of what we're doing uh, that's, that's near term is, of course, that, uh, that feasibility study. Okay. I think that's the first thing they should look at. I think that uh, as investors realize that uh, as important it is to have a first customer like uh, PPG, mm -hmm. I think the next step is to demonstrate that we're not a one-trick pony mm -hmm. and that we're able to go out and attract other important uh, companies in the industry uh, beyond uh, just, uh, just PPG okay. and uh, move Argex from being um, a, a, a successful startup to a real player in the industry. And that's, a every time we move towards that, I think we, we, we de-risk the process for our investors.
Okay, excellent. So, Mr. Bonal, I hope to see you soon, like when uh, the feasibility study is done. I hope to receive your call from that, and uh, we we'll look forward to receive you back and hear back, hear more from you. I look forward to it. It's always a pleasure. All right, thanks Thank you. a lot.